The red planet Mars, with its rusty deserts and swirling dust storms, has ignited our imaginations for decades. But could this barren landscape truly become a viable second home for humanity someday? As environmental degradation and sustainability challenges increasingly threaten life on Earth, the idea of colonizing and transforming Mars has crept from science fiction into legitimate discussion. But how realistic is this goal? And what monumental efforts would be required to make the hostile Martian environment habitable for humans? Before we delve into these questions, please subscribe to Septic Cosmos if you are a space enthusiast. Let's get right to it. On the surface, Mars appears surprisingly Earth-like with polar ice caps, 24.6-hour days, seasons, even ancient dried-up riverbeds. But this familiarity is deceptive. The conditions on Mars pose severe obstacles to human settlement. The atmosphere is only 1% as dense as Earth's, with an average surface pressure just 0.6% of what we're used to. This exceptionally thin atmosphere makes liquid water unstable, with any water instantly vaporizing. Temperatures also plummet due to the minimal atmospheric heat retention, averaging around 80 degree F 60 degree C and frequently dropping below 200 degree F 130 degree C during winter. Without adequate protective gear, the Martian environment would rapidly prove lethal to humans. Luckily, Mars does possess the raw materials needed to create a denser, breathable atmosphere. The existing air consists mostly of 96% carbon dioxide, along with small amounts of nitrogen, argon, and minimal oxygen and water vapor. Converting some of this abundant carbon dioxide into oxygen is chemically possible, though extremely energy intensive. Methods like reducing iron oxide in the soil or using specialized algae or bacteria could slowly produce oxygen over time. More radical terraforming proposals from SpaceX Elon Musk include detonating nuclear bombs over the poles to melt the dry ice caps, releasing CO2 to thicken the atmosphere and potentially warm the planet to above freezing through greenhouse effect. While incredibly risky, such an extreme measure illustrates the sheer scale of intervention required to transform Mars. Another challenge is Mars's lack of a magnetosphere, the invisible shield that protects Earth from solar wind stripping away our atmosphere. Mars likely had a thicker atmosphere in the past, but it has been slowly leaching into space for billions of years due to the lack of this protective bubble. Creating an artificial magnetosphere, perhaps using satellites, could help retain an artificially densified Martian atmosphere over long time periods. Even if the atmosphere could be modified to support a water cycle, allow photosynthesis and enable humans to breathe freely, the soil itself poses additional problems. Martian soil lacks the rich organic compounds found on Earth essential for growing food. It also contains high levels of perchlorate chemicals which are toxic to humans. Massive quantities of fertile soil would need to be imported, with crops grown in protected biodomes. Select bacteria could also be introduced to help convert native soil into a more life-supporting state. The low gravity, around 38% of Earth's, would cause severe long-term health effects like muscle and bone deterioration. Underground or at least heavily shielded habitats would provide shielding from intense cosmic radiation from the sun and deep space, which otherwise increases cancer risk. Even basic human activities like construction, transport, cooking, and waste disposal fundamentally change in an extraterrestrial environment and would require creative solutions. So how might we one day overcome these barriers to make a Mars colony possible? NASA's recent MOXIE experiment aboard Perseverance demonstrated the first prototype oxygen generator on another planet, successfully producing 5 grams of O2 from CO2, enough for a human to breathe for 10 minutes. This provides a proof of concept for larger scale oxygen production. Cyanobacteria and other microbes could also be genetically engineered to rapidly transform Mars' atmosphere, soil chemistry, and nutrient cycles into a more biofriendly state at massive scale. But further advances would be needed in self-sustainable system design, closed-loop food, water, air, and waste cycles. Renewable energy production, storage, and distribution infrastructure must be established to power colonies independent of supply from Earth. 3D printing and autonomous robotic systems will allow infrastructure for settlements to be built up before any humans even set foot on the planet. Nuclear propulsion will shorten travel time and reduce risks of long human space journeys. Genetic modification may help adapt humans and other species to thrive in the challenging Martian gravity, radiation, and atmosphere. Establishing a fully functional, growing colony on Mars, not just a short research outpost, would likely take well over a century. Trillions of dollars of investment, 
decades of intense effort and innumerable technological and engineering breakthroughs cannot be understated. It will push the limits of human ingenuity and capabilities. There would always be risks too. Equipment failures, logistics breakdowns, or radiation exposure could still prove catastrophic so far from our home, perhaps in the far future. Mars may indeed be a thriving second home with shielded cities and biodomes dotting the landscape as millions make a life on the red planet. But realistically, even after heroic feats of terraforming, Mars will always be fundamentally hostile to human physiology and likely only support small contained research settlements, not entire self-sustaining civilizations. The decision to dedicate one's life to living and working on Mars will not be made lightly as comforts and safety of Earth can never truly be replicated. And there are deep ethical questions we must grapple with before journeying down the path of colonizing other worlds. Transforming Mars would require trillions of dollars and vast technical resources. Are these efforts ethically justified when we have yet to eliminate poverty, hunger and environmental damage on our own home planet? Seeking a backup planet could be seen as an act of giving up on fixing the problems with our original one. If we cannot learn to live sustainably on Earth, what right do we have to spread to other planets? There are also profound questions around human equality and social justice in expanding civilization beyond Earth. Will access to Mars be fair and open to all humankind, or only the wealthy and powerful? What forms of governance and cooperation will need to evolve between Earth and a Martian colony? Who owns Martian resources and land? How will rights and responsibilities be negotiated? The aspirations of multiplanetary life must be tempered by thoughtful approaches to these existential concerns. And yet, despite its immense challenges and risks, the dream of one day making Mars habitable sparks something profound in the human spirit. The act of striving towards audacious, borderline impossible goals drives innovation and galvanizes society like few other endeavors can. Tangible spin-off technologies making Mars possible will also undoubtedly improve life on Earth. Environmentally friendly energy production, water recycling, food systems, automation, and material science. Perhaps someday in the future, Mars will truly be a remarkable second home for humanity. But it is very much the realm of fiction for now. To make this fiction reality will require unprecedented resources, commitment, technological prowess, and most importantly, the preservation of our original home as the highest priority. Any efforts to transform Mars must complement, not detract from, building a just, equitable, and sustainable Earth civilization. If humanity can mature enough to live wisely on our own planet, then perhaps we may yet write the next chapters of Civilization Among the Stars. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Septic Cosmos for more content exploring the mysteries of space, astronomy, and the human experience. Tap the notification bell so you never miss a thought-provoking episode. Please also like, comment, and share. It really makes a difference for our small but growing channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video where we'll continue unraveling the astounding cosmos together step by step. This is Spectic Cosmos signing off for now.